Okay, it's a wonderful day. You're about one minute away from an awesome fluorescence light show with these lovely stones from my collection, which most of these I have never revealed before. So it gives you some perspective with the thousands of pieces that I have, the nice variety. So you're really gonna love it when they glow. I just picked some that I like. I didn't really know about the fluorescence ahead of time. So it's gonna be a good video and I'm going to drop some knowledge so that you can learn some important, actually really important um, facts about fluorescence when it comes to minerals, crystals, and the like. So, enjoy, and uh, please give a thumbs up if you like this type of content. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, both of those things really help the channel as I try to grow. Um, and consider subscribing. I recommend checking out some other videos. Go to my playlists and find a topic you like and check out, you know, a few videos, a handful, and see what you think. And then if you want to support me and you want to participate in the mineralogy certification courses, uh, gemology certification courses, and receive all of the official materials, then all you got to do is click subscribe and uh, leave a comment saying new subscriber. Most importantly, enjoy the show coming your way, and as always, rock on. All right, here we go. Now this is one of my weaker, it's not as, ma it's not as strong, it doesn't have as many watts as my big UV beast. So it tells you how really fluorescent these are. Okay, so a couple things to know. I think this is really important and not a lot of people know this. I didn't know this and it was really not that easy to find. That's pretty, that's the uh, halite. Not pretty, look at this stuff. So, ooh, this one's really quite fabulous. So it's, uh, so you want 365 nanometer filtered four minerals long wave uv flashlights they're very inexpensive whoa look at this one and they're safe and here's the really interesting part only 10 to 15 percent of minerals will fluoresce under long wave light so if you get fluorescence under the long wave which again is affordable it's safe you don't need any special eyewear there's a bunch of different sizes uh, and strengths. Like my big one has a 60 foot range, so it's really good for prospecting. So it's really special if you get fluorescence under long wave. Now, when you're looking at specimens, this is interesting. This is that rose quartz. It does have kind of a glow, doesn't it? I always thought quartz didn't glow, but apparently it does. I didn't expect that from that big chunk of crystal. That's an interesting blue fluorescence. So uh, if you're looking at pictures or you're buying specimens or even just, you know, watching a YouTube video, keep in mind that shortwave UV is very common. So whereas 15% at most fluoresce under long wave, 85% of minerals fluoresce usually pretty strongly under shortwave UV light. However, isn't this cool? This is one of the septarians. See the purple right there? Those are fluorite crystals. I'm telling you, the septarians here are amazing. Everything you read about them will say it's calcite, aragonite, and limestone. Actually, there are no calcium carbonates. None of those are involved in the septarians here. So uh, they're very cool, special, and fluorescent. So anyway, the short wave is really expensive. I mean, I was on a wait list for almost a year to get a shortwave UV lamp, and it lasted for about two weeks. They get really hot, and they burn out quickly. I mean, that is just, ask anybody who's had one, it's just absolutely the truth. And so they're expensive, they're hard to find, they don't last very long, they're not particularly effective, and you have to be careful because um, they c it can very much hurt your eyes. So it is not practical, it is not affordable, and for some reason the technology just isn't there yet to where 
it's affordable, accessible, and works without just dying right away. So if you see beautiful fluorescent specimens, check out uh, what the what kind of light it's under. Because if it's short wave, it's looks pretty, but it's not like special, you know, because most of them will do that. But long wave is special and rare. So keep that in mind. All right, we probably should talk about some of these. So what was I going to bring up? Yeah, see that purple? That bright, like, it's a bluish, purplish blue. That is the classic color of fluorite under UV in Colorado. So that makes me think that's what that uh, what that vein is. And then you see the same color here on this, that uh, interesting pink and green pegmatite piece of wood. And then let's talk a little bit about the septarian. So you'll see different colors, okay? So you can see here, they're kind of muted. But then you've got the veins. This is a septarian, a piece of a septarian, and that's very different too. And then look at this one. These dark ones are super bright. And let me show you the ph phosphorescence is when you remove the light source and it continues to glow. In the case of my specimens, they change color a lot of times when they phosphoresce. These I don't think will, but let's see. Not much. Maybe it's because I don't have my super high-powered one. These flashlights, I got two of them for like 30 bucks on Amazon, and they're nice and lightweight, and they do a good job. I mean, you can see the results here, but it's not quite as strong as the UV Beast. So see all the different colors? It's really cool. All of these are septarian, so this is... So anyway, yeah, you'll see a big variety there. Now, another thing I wanted to comment on, whoa, look at this. That's a very pretty glow. It looks very celestial. I don't know, these bugs are kind of ruining it for me. I took all this time to put these out and now I've got all these bugs. These are those really pretty ones where I didn't know, I don't know exactly what they are. They're really sparkly. What else is worth noting? Um, yeah, I'm surprised this is, uh, these bugs are really obnoxious. Yeah. I'm, gosh, there he goes again. <laughs> Let's see if these phosphorus. No. Nope. Yeah, I guess I'm going to have to speed this along. So this should phosphorus. It sh these blues should phosphorus green. There you go. There's a good one. So these are coatings of hydrozincite with strontianite. And that's what gives you that beautiful blue fluorescence and then that very marked phosphorescence. And then the bladed ones, more subtle. A lot of times it's because it's barite and you get this kind of mustard yellow color. But the, you know, but look, these are the bladed ones. They're all from the same area. But you see a lot of different colors, which is because fluorescence is largely due to elements, element impurities. So, tr or trace elements in the mineral, in the rock, in the minerals that make up the rock. And certain elements will yield certain colors. Like, look at this one. It was snow white. Now it's bright pink. So pink is... Pinks and reds are usually a result of manganese. Whoa, this one's blue, this fossil, a little bit. Oh, look at this. So this opal, look how green it is. So the green is from uranium, actually. And uh, there's another element, too. But usually it's uh, uranium, trace uranium, in the opal that makes it green. And it's very diagnostic for opal. So if you're kind of on the fence, is it opal, is it chert, chalcedony, this kind of green color will tell you that you most likely have opal. And these orange ones, so these pieces of wood are just super bright orange. And I'm going to have to get back to you on what elements cause the orange. It is escaping me right now. Whoa, look at this. Isn't that beautiful? This blue. Yeah, I mean, just look at this orange. It is so bright. I will... I have a table of elements and the colors they tend to produce in fluorescence. So I will share that with you for sure. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I hadn't looked at these in a while, so. Anyway, hopefully you've learned some stuff. Let me know what information you'd like. I have tons and tons of charts and cheat sheets. So there, there are specimens or minerals, rather, minerals that have some pretty characteristic fluorescence. So, you know, like celestine, celestine is almost always going to have a blue fluorescence. Uh, opal, 
Green is very characteristic. So there are some that have pretty specific colors. And so that can help you kind of narrow it down, though you don't want to rely on fluorescence for identification alone. And there are minerals that are strongly fluorescent or prone to phosphorescent. And so I have all of that information. So just leave a comment and let me know that you would like the fluorescent, phosphorescent, you can just say luminous and ooh, isn't that pretty? Cheat sheets, I will get them to you. All I ask is that you subscribe, like the video, and then leave me a comment and I will connect with you and get you all hooked up. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, Colorado Glowstone show. Learned a thing or two. And if you have follow-up questions, please let me know. I have, look how red that is. Gosh, that kind of red color in this rock almost makes me think like spinel. It looks like ruby, spinel, probably spinel. Spinel is pretty common around here. Ooh, let's do one more phosphorescence because this one really did a good job. There you go. Woohoo! So yeah, leave a comment, ask questions, request. Uh, let me know what you think. And uh, this is something that I like to cover a lot because as you can see, I have been very blessed to find and be bestowed with long wave fluorescent specimens. And that's true of Colorado in general. So look at that. It's kind of an unknown aspect of Colorado mineralogy. There's a lot of interesting stuff. I'll do a, a whole separate show on that. But anyway, sorry for the bugs and the barking. <laughs> Not ideal, but I was really anxious to check these out and I thought I will just film it and make a video out of it. So I do apologize for that. That's one thing about my show is that it's real. It, it's not a, what's the word? I, I don't do a, what is that called? It's not scripted or practiced or edited, you know, or filtered or anything like that. It's just real and raw. Because of all my health problems, I don't have the ability to put all of that effort and time into it. I would never get a video out. And plus, I just think it's cool just to be real, right? It's like I take you on my journey. It's stuff I would do anyway. And I can share the education I've accrued because you all have busy lives, social lives, active lives, jobs, all of those things. And unfortunately, since becoming disabled, I do not have that stuff. So I have way too much time to learn. And that's what my channel is about, is sharing with you everything I've learned and just sort of taking you along my journeys. So I appreciate any support you can give. Again, like, share, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out. And uh, the sooner I can hit the metrics, I'm just being honest, to where I can get, you know, paid a little bit for my channel, then I can start giving away specimens and stuff like that, which I'm really excited to do. So anyway, thanks so much. Happy Friday. Hope you all have a great weekend. And most importantly, rock on.